Good morning, everyone. I am so glad to see you. It is Tuesday, January 16th, and I don't know about y'all, but I am bundled up. Drop in the chat what your temperature is currently. And if you really want to blow my socks off, tell me what the wind chill is or what it feels like outside. All right. Hi, everyone. It's so good to see y'all, all your faces. Okay, just by, okay, well, I got to see these temperatures though, so bear with me. I think of Maria. Thanks for, thanks for participating, Maria. I've got 11 degrees. Um, we warmed up from 11 to 26, six minus four. Okay, Burr, 19. Okay, I'm going to, okay, 10. We are all cold. So y'all, the, the, the reality is, hang on just a second here. I'm looking at my temperature. It is 18 and it doesn't tell me what it feels like, but you know what? It might as well just be, oh, and schools are closed again, Nicole. Oh man. And um, it might as well be, you know, negative a hundred because cold is just cold. And I say that as well, I live in Texas. And so I say that as well about hot is hot. Like, does it matter if it's 101 or 108 it's just hot right and I feel like we are all experiencing the cold so I hope you bundled up get a blanket grab your hot beverage of choice oh nine degrees okay I, I'm I'm getting cold did y'all see okay I want to give y'all a little tip since we are talking weather and this can apply to your lives this might just be a helpful hack if if you have an iPhone you can use degrees like the actual circular symbol instead of you know writing out degrees if you hold down your zero it will give you the option for degrees so i did a reel on that a couple of um, i don't know days weeks i don't know the, these days in january are just kind of a blur to me but um so if that's a helpful tip for you use it while while we're talking degrees you might as well know it Y'all are smarties, though. You probably already knew that. I, I learned that, I don't know, the day I did the reel, so like a, less than a week ago. So by show of hands, how many of you were at or attended some type of form of Super Saturday? Just kind of give me your hand. Okay. I can't see some of you, but those of you that I can see, your hands raised. So yay. I love that. I'm so glad that you did. So I want to cover something really quickly. Now, for those of you that I can see, and those of you that I even can't see, if you can talk, I am going to ask for participation um, here in a little bit. So I just want you to kind of get that in your head. We love these to be interactive. I don't want to talk the whole time only because, I, you know, I want to hear from y'all as well, because I learn from y'all just as much as y'all learn from whomever speaking. Um, but I'm going to give you a tip I'm going to ask or I'm going to give you a heads up of what I'm going to ask you so you can start thinking about it so it's not like you're on the spot I'm going to ask you what your takeaways were from Super Saturday so I want you to be thinking about that as I make a clarification for Super Saturday and I just want to make sure we're all on the same page who stayed on to the end and heard the awesome offering that Plexus Corporate is has gifted those of us that attended Super Saturday. So I'm seeing hands. Were you excited by it? Did, did y'all love the offering? I want to clarify it just because, you know, I had to hear it a couple of times before it kind of sunk into my brain. And I, and I always feel like if I need to hear it a couple of times, probably somebody else out there needs to hear it a couple of times. So, and y'all see Rusty, he's here with me. Y'all didn't think that he would um, not be a part of this call and see he's he's begging for loves okay so product credits are different and yes I agree whoever said that it's for a short period of time but that just creates a sense of urgency for us right this gives us every opportunity to hang on and you know follow up I'm going to always tell you that that to me is a key to any sales position is following up and if you stick around at noon we're going to work um, on some of these follow-ups and how to but okay, so product credit is definitely different than perk. I want you to think of product credit as just that it is cash available towards next month's subscription. Um, and it must be, or 
next month's order. It must be used next month. So if somebody orders in their first initial order of 100 to 129, they're going to receive a product credit. They don't have to do anything. It's already going to be loaded up in their virtual office in their account. And it will take off, in this case, for 100 to 129, $20. Okay. Now they, and this is PV. So when we're talking, if they place an order of 100 to 129, that is personal volume. And I want to make sure we make that part really, really clear. So second level is 130 to 149. You will then, your new customer would receive a $30 credit. And then if they order 150 or more, which hello, ultimate, weight loss bundle, right? This this would be a great time to promote that. Um, you get $50 credit. So in these next few days that we have, we have until Sunday to exercise this offering, I would be following up with my people that I've talked to. I would be following up to anyone that I've talked to. I would be following up or making initial contact with people that you feel like, okay, they, they haven't been interested or I've never talked to them about this. This is a great time to have all of those reach outs. Anytime we have a new product or a new offering, this gives you a reason to reach out. And so we're gonna talk about that a little bit later at noon on um, some of the reach outs that we can make. But man, ultimate weight loss, when they purchase their triplex, their reset and their balance, they're getting a free bag of slim and then you're able to offer them a $50 credit for the next month. I love this for so many reasons. Number one, it's a win for your customer. It's such a great value for them. Number two, for you as a business person, you're setting yourself up for retention. Hello, convention contest. This is just speaking directly to the plans and the incentives that we have in place to make you successful. So I want y'all to keep that in mind as you are reaching out. Don't let January 21st or January 22nd come and you're like, man, I should have talked to more people because why, why would you allow someone to wait until January 22nd through the 31st to sign up? If they're gonna do it, they might as well do it this week because the value add, it won't be there next week. So um, that's that's my two cents on that. I think that it's a great promotion and one that we just need to really lean into. And um, who doesn't like saving money? So we're going to talk about that here in a second. But now I want to ask y'all, and I most of y'all had your hands raised. So oh, how long is a free slim available? That's a great question. Annette, it is available until the end of the month. So uh, that is our promotion through January 31st. Um, so we that offering will remain through the end of the month. It's just the $50 product credit is only through January 21st. So, okay, let's talk Super Saturday. Um, how many of you were virtual, like strictly virtual, like you didn't attend a party of any other kind. Like you were, so most of us were virtual. Um, I know a few people on the call traveled, but I wanna hear from you. Um, what were your takeaways? What were some of your favorite key points? We'll start there. I loved Emily Roberts, how she said how she lost 50% of everything and Scott told her just to quit. And she was like, do you know me? Right. <laughs> you know? And then look what she's done since then. Just she's um, built it back. And this isn't a question just for you, Nicole. And thank you for volunteering first. I, it's always, you know, it's always hard to get the conversation started, but once we do, I feel like we're just there. And um, so what do y'all what do you think that was that she's done? What have y'all seen her do that helped turn her business around? 50%, I mean, for any of us, right? Like you lose 50% of anything and that is a noticeable loss, right? I mean, that's, think about where you are right now. If you lost 50% of your business, what would your mindset be? We know Emily's, I mean, you know, I, I walked some of that with her and, you know, was there when, during that season when she lost and saw 
the the defeat as it would be there, right? Like when you lose 50%, you start to, you lose any percent, I don't care. Um, you start to question, you start to feel like you're in a valley. And it's in that moment. And for her, that moment was when her husband was like, well, just quit, quit. She had that, uh, that moment was a pivotal moment for her. She could either go, I'm gonna quit. Or in her case, it was more like, do you know who I am? Do you see what I'm capable of? So what do y'all, so we know it was her mindset, number one, right? I'll, I'll go ahead and we'll get the obvious one out of the way. What have y'all seen her do in her business that y'all feel like maybe sets her apart or you're impressed with? We've seen, we've heard about the Valley and now we've seen her climb to the top. What is something that she's doing that y'all are impressed with? Mm -hmm. She does all those reels and puts herself out there and doesn't care, yeah. which is my biggest downfall. Yeah, I mean, we have voices in our heads, right? And I, yeah. you know, thanks for your vulnerability. You know, I mean, I think that that is a reality, right? Like we, I, and I think especially when reels first came out and there was a lot of this uh, joking and let's dance and let's mime or, you know, lip sync words not mine, that's more like, right, that lip sync words or do silly dances and that may be felt way, way, way out of your comfort zone. But now we're seeing a shift of just being real and intentional and showing up as your authentic self. And so I know a couple of people on my team are doing a 30-day real challenge where they just have committed to showing up daily in reels and they don't care if they're good. They're just showing up as their authentic self. So I wanted to put that idea out there in your heads and just said, what if, what if you showed up for 30 days in reels? Just commit to that. You know, we, we heard of <clears throat> Brenda Martin who decided to show up in reels and literally started with a very small audience. And now she's up to hundreds of thousands of followers just by showing up. And so write that name down, Brenda Martin. She is mama of, you know, I don't want to leave any one ch child out, but like maybe 11 children, 10 children, a lot of, a lot of kids. She basically has a classroom. And um, she's showing up every day in reels though. And she's just highlighting her life. And no, I don't think you need 11 children to be interesting. I don't think you need a lot going on to be interesting. You could literally film yourself doing anything that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Is it laundry? Film yourself doing laundry and then speak about something that's connective, right? Like not just about the business, like maybe it's a laundry tip. You know, I think that's the thing is that a lot of times we get stuck in, I've got to talk about Plexus or I've got, you don't. You, like the other day I found out some information about baby carrots. And so I just grabbed a bunch of pictures of carrots and I did a voiceover just saying, okay, this is why we might want to think about baby care or not buying baby carrots. And I gave all these reasons and it was not, I never showed my face. I just flipped through pictures of baby carrots and said, and maybe this is food for thought as we are trying to be better about feeding our families. So these are just some ideas for you as you continue to show up authentically as yourself. Okay. So what are some other things that Emily is doing or, or another takeaway. And um, we can like, we're women, most of us, we're all women on here. Um, we spaghetti talk, right? We kind of, <laughs> my husband's like, uh, that's what we name it in our family is because my husband's like, I can't keep up with you and your girlfriends. So I'm like, oh, spaghetti talk. It's like, but women, we can keep up with it. Right. So what are some other takeaways or something that you see, Emily? One of the things that, uh, kind of hit me in the head was how much I need to really focus on building a community. I mean, I have my friends, my close friends, and most of them are not Plexus. And some of them use Plexus, some don't. <clears throat> but I feel like um, a bigger community, connecting in bigger ways and being uh, brave, bold, 
to introduce people in my community to my business. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't know. I've been doing this now for eight years, almost eight years. And so I think everybody knows kind of my story, but, and I don't have like this, like shining example of the last few years. So uh, I don't, I don't feel like my story is very motivating. So that, that's kind of, it holds me back, but I, I know that that community is going to be a big part of it. Well, I think well, you some great points there. So like, number one, thank you, Annette, for sharing. I, I so appreciate that. And um, I, I love the point that you brought up about community and finding ways to get together. You know, just food for thoughts or something that just popped into my brain about one of the tools that corporate gives us is the book study, right? And that's available to Plexus, anybody, VIPs, customers, us. Um, what if instead of you just watching it by yourself, you gathered friends once a month to watch it together. And that doesn't have to be Plexus people because as we know, the book studies cover a wide range of topics. It's not just Plexus focused, but that may be a great way to introduce people to the Plexus community by hosting a watch party at your home, have pink drink out. It would be a great way to trickle if you would plexus, but also just gathering people of different businesses, whether it's real estate, teachers, you know, I mean, name it, right? There's so many different ways to make money and we have so many different connections, even stay at home moms. You know, I mean, I, I've always said, I feel like stay at home moms have the one of the biggest jobs in the world because you wear many, many different hats. I mean, we're selling something to our kids every day, right? Even if it's just the art of negotiation of finish your vegetables. So, you know, I think anyone can benefit from our book clubs. And I do love how corporate is kind of uh, giving us that platform of being a social wellness community. And uh, I don't know about y'all, but all of a sudden I'm like, tell me more about sourdough bread and all the things, because I, I think I could get behind that. So again, you know, those are just a couple of different ways of bringing people together. It doesn't always have to be Plexus focused, but I mean, it's part of what we do. You know, I heard Annette say, I've been doing this eight years and I know most people in this room, we've been doing this for a seasoned amount of time. And so it's part of you and there it should be unashamed you should be unashamed about that that it's part of you just like a teacher may talk about an instance in their classroom to you you know on a social level like this is a part of you and I, I there is no shame in that and if you're bringing people together for the sake of social wellness and plexus is a part of that that that's okay that's a good that is a good thing you know that that's promoting what you believe in. So, okay, so I hear we've got, we got to show up. We've, we're, we want to be intentional mindset. Even when we're in a space of loss, we have that op opportunity. And if, if you're in a valley, I want to challenge you right now. You know, I want to be the Scott Roberts in your life and say, well, you could quit. You could quit. And then today, is your pivotal moment to decide what you want to do. Now, if you're on a high, keep riding that high and keep doing what you're doing. I'm proud of you and, you know, continue to grow, but share that enthusiasm with someone because there, there's always that season where, you know, you're going to be on the high and somebody else is going to be on the low. What if you walked beside them and let them know that it was okay and shared some of your struggles in your business? And I want to assure you because you know, Annette's not the first person to tell me that they don't have a, an amazing story to share, but it is your story and it is amazing. And there's going to be connection in your story because people don't always connect with the, oh, you know, I went from this to this. Um, I have always found that when I'm struggling most and I share that, that's usually the season I have the most growth or the most camaraderie because people connect to that pain and they are they can see themselves in 
the woe more than they can the yay. So that's something I want you to think about is uh, showing up and telling your story, you know, not always painting that picture of what, you know, I was able to change my life completely because X, Y, Z or, or what have you, you know, like it, it's important to be able to share. I mean, you don't, don't want to be a negative Nelly, right? There's that balance, but not always painting this picture of I'm able to do whatever I want, whenever I want. Well, that, I mean, I like, you're kind of maybe detracting people in my opinion, right? It's like, I don't know. So I, it's just food for thought to find yourselves to be in a space of more authenticity and vulnerability. And with that said, learning to share your story. And so what I want to encourage you to do, because I don't know, I'm not always the most natural storyteller about my own life, especially. And so I want to encourage you when you find somebody that's telling a great story online, maybe look at exactly their format and what they're saying. And then how can you tweak that to make that about you? Uh, if you don't know about the tool chat GPT, I want to share that with you. It's an app. It's free. You're able to, and I would say, I want you to be careful in using it because for me, it's an idea starter. It's not something that you should just copy paste, right? Like we don't want AI being our voice, but sometimes you get writer's block. Sometimes you don't know how to say. And so you can type in like, I'm trying, I'm, I'm creating a post about a time where I didn't have money. I need this post to be heartfelt. I need this post to share about the struggles that I was having paying my grocery bill. I couldn't go in the groceries without being on a strict budget. And chat GPT will help you massage those words down. Now you're going to have to go in and you're going to have to edit it because I promise you it's not going to sound exactly like you, but the more you say, okay, I love this part. I don't like, you can talk to it like a person and it will then shoot out more information to you. And so I want to encourage you to utilize that chat GPT in a way that, and it's chat, like C-H-A-T, G-P-T. Utilize that in a way that will help your business because I'm all about working smarter, not harder. And if that's a tool that we have available to us and is used in the right way, I say use it. Has anyone used chat GPT? Okay, speak English, chat GPT. Leanne, you have, Michelle has, okay. And have y'all had, like, just give me thumbs up, thumbs down. I know sometimes I can't talk. Thumbs up, you've enjoyed it. It's been helpful. It's been really helpful for me. Or I'll even, and I'll give y'all a little tip. I'll even find a post of someone that I like and I love everything that they've said, but I don't want to copy word for word what they've said. So I'll pop it into chat GPT and say, you know, reword this post for Instagram. And then it comes up with a different way to say it, right? And sometimes I still have to massage it. But man, it saves me so much time because I'm not a natural writer. It's not something that comes to me easily. Like some people just have that gift. It's called chat. Here, I'll type it in our chat. And it's chat, oh, chat, GPT. Okay, mm, there we go. Perfect. Okay. How are we on time? Okay. We've got seven minutes and I actually had something I wanted to train y'all on real quick. And so, um, yeah, you're so welcome. Um, so what I want to talk to y'all about is a follow-up tip. Um, and I want to thank all y'all for participating and talking to me today. Um, it makes things so much more fun. And I, and I'm all about, I love conversation. Um, I'm the queen of spaghetti talk. So, okay, so let's talk about a follow-up tip for you as we are talking about, you know, this great incentives that we have and how do we reach out to people and, and you know, and y'all are smarties. Like, here's the thing, I'm not going to, this is, we're not changing your life today. We are giving you a tip that you may be able to apply to your business immediately. So um, I want y'all to, and follow me for a second, stop F-bombing people. And what do I mean by that? When you're doing your follow-up, so many of us will say, hey, I'm just reaching back out or hey, I'm just following up with you on this. Stop it. Stop it. 
I'm going to teach you a different way to follow up and put you in a position of being in charge. And to me, when I hear follow up, it's kind of like, hey, I don't mean to bother you. It, it kind of puts you in this position, whether you realize it or not, of weakness. And I know we're not trying to position ourselves that way, but from a sales 101 perspective, it's absolutely putting you in a position of weakness and as if you're bothering someone. So instead of saying, hey, I'm wanting to follow up with you, what we want to do is either one of two things. We want to start it off with, as promised, I'm, I'm circling back around with you. I'm, as promised, I'm getting back with you, right? As promised, it's Tuesday. I told you I would hear, hear your thoughts. Does it make sense to, that's your second part. Does it make sense to, does it make sense to take a look at Plexus again? Does it make sense to take advantage of our special this month? Does it make sense to fill your best? So if you haven't promised anything, you're just going to roll into, does it make sense? I'm not saying don't say hi. I'm not saying, you know, don't have some politeness about you. But what I am saying is take some of your control back and ask somebody, does it make sense? I can't tell you how many times I have utilized that follow-up and it has yielded responses immediately because it's a timing question instead of a simple yes or no. Does it make sense? And they may say, you know, it really doesn't. Okay, great. What are the next steps? You're putting that back onto them. It's super simple. Oh, Annette, go ahead. So oh, when, when you're using the, does it make sense to, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Like let's say about our our monthly our monthly you know discounts and benefits to new customers. Would you go ahead and say all of that in your does it make sense to, or would you? I mean, like, would you describe it right then, or would you wait until they sit? Because how are they going to know? Sure. Like, so what I would say is something like, Plexus has come out with a great promotion this month. Does it make sense to look at it? Okay. And then hard stop. Right. Okay. Oftentimes we are ready to all yeah. the details, right? And my advice is wait for the answer. Okay. Right? Because what you're you just asked them is does it make sense to look at saving you some money this month with Plexus? And if they say no, you say, Oh, I hear the timing's not great for you. What's the next best step for you? Just gives, okay. gives you a little more control. It gives you a little more say, and it gets right to the point, right? Because I think, you know, we've been doing this a long time. And what I don't like, a pattern that we've come up with is we become very predictable. It's like, oh, hey, girl, how you doing? And we kind of tiptoe to getting to the point where I think it's imperative to get to the point and ask, you know, Say, say what you're there for, right? Because I don't, I think that's where people start feeling taken advantage of or where network marketing can get kind of a slimy um, reputation is because we don't get to the point. It's, it's a creative tool. I know on my team, we've used it for quite some, some time. It's one of those that I like to remind people about because it's easy to get away from because to say to follow up or, you know, I'm just, um, reaching back out to you, it's natural. It's because it's what we are doing, right? But I think it it's received so much better. And I will say the times that I've said follow up or reaching back out, I don't seem to get the same response as I do when I remember to use, does it make sense? And this is a perfect time with all of our offerings to use, does it make sense? Okay. Um, okay, so that is what I have for y'all. I wanted to make sure to get that tip in because I think it's going to be super helpful, especially when we roll into our power hour. So I'm going to, we've got about one minute left. I want to ask y'all if y'all have any questions. And then if not, um, Aaron, I, if you're still on, or I guess I could stop the recording. I'm in, I'm in charge of this. So I'm going to see if there's any other questions. No, I'm going to stop our recording.